So we're still finding solutions to our trig, trig equation and we're finding them in the intervals. So that means we don't need the 2k pi or the k pi, right? But now we have to factor it before we can split it into the factors, right? Everything we've done so far has already been in factored form. So the best way to do this is to substitute in for the cosine. So I'm going to let u be cosine x. So that means I can rewrite that equation as 2u squared minus 7u minus 4 equals 0. You with me on that? So now I'm going to solve it just like it's a regular quadratic equation. So I'm going to have two sets of parentheses. So now we're going to factor it equals 0. And we're going to have a 2u in each set. Right, so this is what we just finished. Sine in the first set is negative. Sine in the second set is positive. Two times four is eight. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me eight and subtract to give me seven. So eight and one, the eight goes in the first set. And I see I have a common 2 in the first set. So we have u minus 4 times 2u plus 1 equals 0. So we started, we substituted in for cosine so we could see it a little bit better. You don't have to do that substitution. You can factor with the cosine in there. I just think it gets kind of messy. So I think it's easier to make that little substitution so you can see it. And now I can continue solving here. If u minus 4 equals 0, then u would be a positive 4. If 2u plus 1 is 0, then u would be negative 1 half, correct? Now, we're going to sub the cosine back in. So if u is the cosine of x, u equals 4 means the cosine of x equals 4. And if u equals negative 1 half, that means the cosine of x is negative 1 half. So now we're going to our unit circle. Cosine x equals 4, we don't have to worry about, right? Because that's outside of the range of cosine, right? Cosine's negative 1 to 1, so we can ignore that. The cosine of x will never equal 4. For cosine x is negative 1 half, we're going to the unit circle. Cosine is negative in quadrant, uh, hello, 2 in quadrant 3. The x is 1 half for my family of over 3's. So in quadrant 2, my over 3 is 2 pi over 3. And in quadrant 3, it's 4 pi over 3. So make your substitution. Set it equal to zero and factor. Get, all, get as far as you can. It's just fewer pen strokes, right, to write u than it is to write cosine. And then sub your cosine back in into your unit circle. All right, two sine squared plus sine minus one. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start by letting u be the sine of theta. So that means I can rewrite this as 2u squared plus u minus 1 equals 0. So that has to be factored so we can do anything with it. So two sets of parentheses with a 2u in each set. Sign in the first set is positive. Sign in the second set is negative. 
a times c, two times one is two. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me two and subtract to give me one. That's two and one and the two goes in the first set. And I have a common factor in the first set of a two. So I'm left with u plus one times 2u minus 1 is 0. If u plus 1 is 0, then u is negative 1. If 2u minus 1 is 0, then u is positive 1 half. Now we can sub our sign back in. And it was the sine of theta is negative 1 or the sine of theta is positive one-half. So the sine of theta is negative one. That's where my y value is negative one. And that occurs at 3 pi over 2. Sine is positive on the top, right, in quadrant one and quadrant two. My y value is one half for my family of over sixes. My over six in quadrant one is pi over six. My over six in quadrant two is five pi over six. So all three of those guys would be answers here. And remember, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Everybody okay? So all we did was add the factoring. This one does not have a lead coefficient, which is nice, makes the factoring easier, right? And again, you can go ahead and factor with the cosine in there if you can see it. I just think it's easier to go all the way down without the cosine and then pop it in at the end. So I'm gonna let u be cosine x. So this guy is now u squared minus 4u plus 3 equals 0. And we're going to solve it just like we would a regular old quadratic. So two sets of parentheses, a u in each set. Sign in the first set is negative. Sign in the second set is negative, right? Because negative times negative is positive. There is no lead coefficient, so I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me three and add to give me four. Three and one. And we'll put that three in the first set just out of good practice, right? So that means when I solve that, that either u is 3 or u is 1. So let's sub our cosine back in. Either cosine x is 3 or cosine x is 1. 3 is outside of the range of cosine, right? So we can just ignore that. Cosine of x will never be 3. And then we'll go over to our cosine x is 1. So that must be the ordered pair 1, 0, correct? Which occurs at, let's see, what's my ordered pair? It says 0 to 2 pi, 0 is included. So x equals 0. They told me the interval was 0 to 2 pi. So that's how I knew I needed to use the 0. If it had been the other way, if it had been 0 with the parenthesis and 2 pi had the bracket, that would mean we were including the 2 pi and the answer would be 2 pi. Okay. All right, another good guy here where we need to factor. We are going to let you be sine theta. 
So I can rewrite this as 2u squared plus 5u plus 2 equals 0. So again, now I'm to a regular old quadratic. I'm going to factor it. Two sets of parentheses equals 0. 2u in each set. Again, I know that's too much. I'll take out the extra in a minute. The sign in the first set is positive because that's the first sign in the problem. The sign in the second set is positive because we need those two signs to equal the last sign. A times C here, 2 times 2 is 4. We're looking for two numbers that will multiply to give us 4 and add to give us 5. 4 and 1. And again, we want to go ahead and put that 4 in the first set even though the signs are the same. It's just a good habit to keep up. And we have a common 2 in the first set that we can just get rid of, right? So then I'm down to u plus 2 times 2u plus 1 equals 0. So u is negative 2 or u is negative 1 half. Now we can sub the, co the sign, it's sign, right? Yeah, the sign back in. Sine of theta is negative 2, or the sine of theta is negative 1 half. And now we go to the unit circle. Uh, negative 2 is outside of the range of sine, right? Sine will never be negative 2, so we can ignore it. Sine of theta is negative 1 half. Sine is negative on the bottom, right? in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And the y value is 1 half for my family of over 6s. My over 6 in quadrant 3 is 7 pi over 6, right? Because 6 pi over 6 is pi. And in quadrant 4, 11 pi over 6. Everybody okay? Okay. Now we have a secant. We're doing the exact same thing we've been doing. They like to do sine and cosine first and then throw the other uh, trig functions in. So we don't have a lead coefficient, so we can let u be secant x. So then I can rewrite this as u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. Now we have a quadratic that we are going to factor with two sets of parentheses. So I have a u and a u. The sign in the first set is negative. The sign in the second set is positive because negative times positive is negative. Since we don't have a lead coefficient, a times c is just c, right? So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me 2 and subtract to give me 1. That's 2 and 1, and our bigger number goes in the first set. So now we have either u is 2 or u is negative 1. Now we can sub our secant back in. So the secant of u is 2, or the secant of u is negative 1. So now we're going to the unit circle. If the se oh, I said secant of u. I should have said theta. Sorry. Theta. Right? We're subbing that in. So... If the secant of theta is 2, then that means that the cosine of theta must be 1 half. 
I realize at the beginning of the problem it says X. I probably should have made that an X, but I already screwed it up with the U, so I'm just going to roll with it. Um, cosine is positive on that right-hand side, right, where X is positive. So in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, and my cosine is 1 half for my family of over 3s. So theta or X or whatever it is in quadrant 1 is pi over 3, and in quadrant 4 is 5 pi over 3, right? Because 6 pi over 3 would be 2 pi. If the secant is negative 1, that means the cosine is negative 1, right? Which means the ordered pair must be negative 1, 0, which occurs at pi, right? So those three guys are your answers. Everybody good with that type?